Hi, I'm Mark King, Investment Editor at Columbia Threadneedle Investments. Welcome to our fortnightly column. And in this edition, we're rounding up the European news, and it's fair to say that Italy has been the dominant force in European and global markets in recent weeks, as the country has worked through something of a political crisis. The country has emerged from this period with a coalition government formed of the populist Five Star Movement and the Far Right League, which together won about 50% of the vote in an inconclusive election on the 4th of March. They've since, of course, after much discussion, formed a government with Giuseppe Conte as Prime Minister. Now clearly there is a risk that this new coalition will enact populist policies such as pursuing a break from the European Union, but perhaps just as worrying is its economic proposals, and these include aggressive tax cuts, a dual band flat tax system and a guaranteed income for the poor. Now these are expensive policies to put in place and along with other populist policy proposals clearly present a risk for the Italian economy, not to mention Italian assets. The fear is that this could spread wider throughout Europe. However, policy proposals are not actual policies and there is little reason at present to fear the kind of worst case scenario that in 2011 led Italy to the brink of a debt crisis. For one, European Union rules themselves will deter any radical action from the new government, while it remains to be seen how the figureheads of this coalition will fare once the daily grind of elected political life begins in earnest. Nevertheless, equity markets reacted strongly to the political strife, with Italy's own MIB index falling by around 2,500 points, or around 10%, between the middle and the end of May, and that's according to Bloomberg. It was a similar story in London, as the FTSE 100 fell by around 250 points, and that was between the 22nd of May and the end of the month, as those fears grew that Italy's political turmoil would lead to a wider market sell-off. Again, that's also according to Bloomberg data. US equities, already sensitive in May after Trump pulled out of agreed talks with North Korea amid some pretty strong rhetoric, were not affected overly, although bank stocks in particular were sold off. For a more detailed breakdown of specific European markets, check out the online version of this column, and I'll see you next time.